it's a question that baffles all of us. How much home insurance should you get? And what kind of homeowner's insurance? And what about the belongings? Well, we brought in our expert, Gavin Roberts, who was named Manager of the Year for the entire state by the Kentucky Farm Bureau Insurance two years in a row. He's a former Chamber of Commerce board chairperson and uh, the Platinum Reader's Choice Award two years in a row, too. So I think you're pretty qualified. You get a lot of questions about home insurance, I would assume, Gavin. We do, Kirk, every day. And what is legally required with regard to homeowner's insurance? Kirk, the, the, uh, the government does not require you to cover your home or your property belongings inside the home, but your bank will. If you have a mortgage on your home, the bank is going to require you to have enough coverage to satisfy their mortgage. Is this part of the mortgage payment, or should you go out and get your own insurance? I would recommend going out and getting your own carrier of insurance, local insurance agent, because the coverage that you're going to purchase through force place insurance is exponentially higher for you as a consumer. So the government doesn't require homeowner insurance if you own a home, but your bank does because they want to protect themselves from payment. They do. They do. In case of a catastrophic event, they don't want to be on the line with you just handing them the keys if something were to happen. And real quickly, what if you don't own your home? You just rent an apartment or so. Is there any reason to have insurance then? It is. Uh, Most people don't recognize or realize that renter's insurance is affordable. Um, It is something that you need. We've paid out many claims to our our members at Kentucky Farm Bureau because of another tenant in a a property, in an apartment building, maybe maybe on the bottom floor or the top floor. But if they have a fire, there's smoke damage in in the building. And if you don't have renter's insurance and your apartment is smoked up, there's no coverage for that. You're going to have to pay for out of pocket to co- repair and re- replace your belongings. Even if you're not responsible, wouldn't the other person's insurance cover that? Not necessarily. They have to be liable. Um, they had to, had to be something that they did intentionally. So even if it wasn't your fault, if someone else's disaster created problems in your apartment, you're not covered? Let's take, a, for instance, of a kitchen fire in another apartment. It, the person did not do that intentionally, and chances are that their insurance company is not going to pay for the smoke damage in yours. It's up to you as a consumer to be responsible enough to carry renter's insurance on your own belongings. Home insurance, really, you can drop into three categories, I would guess. First of all, the house itself. So do you insure your home for what it would cost to replace it or what it is valued at? That's one of the biggest things that I counsel people on every day. Someone might purchase their home for $100,000. It might be a 30-year-old home. But in order to replace that structure today, it would probably cost 30 to 40% more because of the market value is different than the replacement value or reconstruction value. And you always want the replacement value for obvious reasons. If you can afford to pay for the replacement coverage, that is the best option for you. And what about your belongings in your home? Is that a separate policy? A homeowner's policy is actually a package policy. It comes with the, the structure itself, which has covered the home. And then there are other structures, which if you had a detached storage building or above ground swimming pool or a fence or a detached garage that's covered on that policy as well. And then the, the third coverage is your contents. Your contents are covered under your homeowner's policy. A lot of people, I guess, would overlook how valuable the contents are often as much as the home itself. They are, and I think people underestimate what they spend on their personal belongings. That stuff adds up over a 15, 20-year period. In order to replace all that stuff, we advise people to go around with their their iPhone or their cell phone, take pictures, uh, store those somewhere on your iCloud or something so you can pull those up in case of a catastrophic event. You probably couldn't remember all the things you had otherwise. You couldn't. And we actually we actually tell people to open their drawers and take a snapshot because that actually has helped in the past of, for an inventory list. Well, I'm not going to ask somebody to open their drawers and take a snapshot, <laughs> but I know I, I know what you're talking about. Uh, okay. Now, what... One, one, other que- one other question. Stay with me here. Besides the belongings in the house itself, you really want to insure yourself, too, with liability insurance. Now, what does that cover, and why is that important? That is part of the package policy as well for a homeowner's policy. Liability insurance and medical payments to others. Medical payments is if you have someone on your property, let's say that you have some friends over and um, they twist their anchor on their property or they trip over a water hose or trip on the sidewalk, and they have to go to the emergency room. The medical payments is, is going to be paid immediately 
to help offset any medical expenses that person might have. If it was intentional or you knew there was a hole there or you knew there was some liable situation on your property and you didn't warn that person, then they could turn around and sue you. And that's where your liability insurance would come in. Or if somebody were to sue you for slander or for any other personal liability reason, your personal liability insurance is there to protect you and to represent you in case of a lawsuit. We're talking to Gavin Roberts, uh, our insurance expert here. If you have a claim, if something happens in your home, how do you go about getting money for it? You need to contact your agent as soon as you can. If it's on the weekend, most companies have a toll-free number, or the, if you know your agent here locally, you can typically get a hold of your agent locally. I would encourage you to contact them immediately. That way, if there's a water leak or something, we can try to mitigate any further damage by getting a water restoration company out to dry the situation, or if there's a fire, to get you in a situation where your family is safe. Okay, let's take an example, Gavin. A water pipe burst. Your first call is to the plumber. The second call is to the insurance agent? I would say so, yes. I would call the insurance agent um, so they can advise you on where to go from there. They can get an adjuster out to immediately take a look at the damage and get a water restoration company out there to start drying the situation and to put you back as quickly as possible to normal. Do you have earthquake insurance? Should I have it? Is it a roll of the dice? Kirk, that, that is a personal preference. Um, I currently, on my homeowners, do not carry earthquake insurance. And typically, most people are not educated on earthquake insurance. We're in a moderate zone here in Davis County. People don't realize what their deductible is. On their earthquake insurance, it's going to typically be a 10% or 15% deductible, and that is 10 or 15% of what their home is insured for, as well as their other structures, as well as their contents. There's a deductible for each one of those lines on the homeowner's policy, and those can be $10,000 or they can be up to $60,000. You would have to pay out first before anything is going to be paid out on. How can I get my homeowner's insurance policy rates down? The first thing I would do is is go sit down with your agent. Every company will have different discounts for the homeowner's insurance. One is by bundling, by putting your home and your auto with the same company. Also, make sure that you have the discount for smoke detectors, fire extinguishers, deadbolt locks. If you have an alarm, make sure you have that on your home. If you don't have a fire extinguisher, if you don't have smoke detectors, I would install those immediately. They'll Um, pay for themselves, I assume. They will. They will pay for themselves as well as the safety of your family. And then also, I would take an inventory of your home. If you've got trees, hanging over your home, branches, you know, the insurance company take notes of that. Okay, your home burns down and so does your garage and your two cars. Your car is not personal property. Your car would have to have full coverage on it through an auto insurance policy if you want to get paid back for on your your auto insurance. Didn't know that. And the most common mistake homeowners make in buying insurance? Not being educated on what they're purchasing. You need to find a local agent that you can sit down with and be educated. Ask them questions, but the most importantly, sit down with an agent that's going to ask you questions about your particular needs. Thank you, Gavin Roberts, our insurance expert here at Owensboro. We're going to talk about life insurance next week and maybe even touch a little bit on this health care insurance. That's a topic, isn't it? It is. It is. (laughs) Thank you, Gavin Roberts, here on the K-Zone.